We tracked down a couple more cores near the edge of the city. Folks used to make pilgrimage here to pay their respects to Pith, the bull. Well, the gods are long gone now, and the Orchard Core is long gone too. Seems Pith ain't much of a watchdog. The gods don't care about trinkets, but the kid ain't no god. Pith stood for something once. Something real. In time, though, the bull stopped being a symbol and started being decoration. He couldn't even save his loyal subjects. Pith makes a decent scarecrow, at least. Then Pith lights up like a rodeo. The kid breaks into bits. Must have been guarding that shrine. So what'll it be? Invoke the gods, or tell them off? found a core, but least he found Zolf's precious shrine. Pith Orchard. Place is a dead end in more ways than one. Zolf doesn't touch the thing. Says the god of commotion is no children's toy. 
the Ura feared the gods. We turned them into toys, put their faces on our walls. There's only one way in the Cinderbrick Fort. The hard way. Sure, the city marshals may be gone. But now the fort's crawling with windbags. Ain't so lucky. They've been left to freeze or starve or face the kid. Ready for the windbags this time. Well, windbags young and old keep fighting for the fort. Something the windbags just can't handle. Something that'll punch clean through their greasy hides. Windbags ain't much different from normal folks. All they want's a warm place to stay and a decent meal. Side. A lot of them wound up here in this very fort. Could have been minding the business underground like in the old days. supplies, but the kid sure can. As for the windbags, Cinderbrick gave them enough heat and metal to munch on for a while. Well, the fort ain't theirs by right. Can't blame them for wanting it, though. So many of those sorry things hold up inside that old fort. Not a scratch on him as he presses on the higher ground. and everything in sight with that new fangled musket. Kids stash grenades is their form if things get even worse. 
Damn, Glutus. Maybe it was Glandon. They got something to gain, and only their sorry hides to lose. Kid shows up just as Ulf's telling me about his own journey to the city. Seems the only thing the calamity saved for Zolf was his smoking pipe. The marshals seem like good men, he says. They treated him with dignity. Zolf brought his antique smoking pipe all the way from the terminals. Even since the Ura surrendered to us, the marshals kept a wary eye on him. Zolf's travels ain't much compared to what the kids had to go through for all this. Here, kid can pay respect to the old world and earn it in kind. The city's peace. They can rest easy now. The Masons. We built the city strong. Now there's only two of us. The Valediction. Just another one of my sketches. Nothing more.
corpses after just one drag. The past. Only good thing ever come out of the past is history. Say he's led a hard life. Supposing what he says in his sleep ain't no lie. He never knew his old man, but he had his mama to take care of. Frail thing with pure white hair like his. Having his mama's hair did the kid no favors while he was growing up, but he learned to hold his own out there. School ain't working out, so the kid signs up for a turn on the rippling walls. Make his mama some money. Thanks to folks like the kid, the walls kept Ceylonia safe from whatever's out there. The elements, the aura, you name it. Once a kid done his time, he hurried on home. Turns out his mama's time was done too. The city had nothing for him. The money he'd been sending home was nowhere to be found, either. So what'd the kid do? Why he went right on back to the walls for another five years? In the history of Ceylandia, nobody has ever volunteered for a second shift on the walls. How there, kid learned to fend for himself, learned to build, learned to break. time, the kid earned good standing with the marshals. They trusted him to scout out farther than anybody. One night, on one of his expeditions, the ground beneath him shuddered cracked and split apart.
He saw nothing where the world used to be. The calamity happened just like that. All the kid had to work with was his hammer and the clothes on his back. Through twisted streets, he ran with nothing but the city crest and an old stranger's voice to guide him. Finally arrived at Ceylandia's vaunted safe haven. He and no one else. But then, all he got was more thankless work from a man who ain't even asked his name. Sure, I may be the one who dreamt up the walls and the bastion, but the kid made him real, not me. I'd like to say I'll never forget him, or what he's doing, what he's done. I surely would. The Langston River flowed free and wild till the Calamity drank it all up. Maybe all that water just grew wings and flew off. Riverbanks swarming with windbags. They're so bent on finding the core they hardly notice the kid. Lucky for him, a certain famous fairy barge is still afloat. Weeping Nelly. She sends some squirts crying home as she leaves port. Maybe Nelly knows the way to the core. Maybe she can slip right past all the clamor on the coast. Or maybe not. The security skiff pulls up portside. Nelly's just another windbag to those guns. Just then, the windbags notice who she's sailing with. Try to cut her off. They 
try to slow her down. They try to knock her out. Well, Weepinelli tries harder. Try as she might, though, she hits a snag. Kids gotta help her get untangled. Favors for favors. At least she picked a good spot for a break. Cause the core is right there. Then the kid hears an unusual sound, like a hundred flapping wings. Peckers. They had their own eyes on the core. Why? Well, kid ain't got time to think it over just yet. He finds Weeping Nelly raring to go. Turns out she's got a special surprise for when the waters get rough. She's gonna need a little help with all them pickers. Traffic things think they're king of the roost now. The rest of us only wish we could fly in times like these. Curious gifts keep on coming, starboard side. Don't seem to care what they shoot, as long as they hit something. The windbag's getting even better out here. They aim to smash with the Nelly to split. to remember this next part. Why go to Prosper Bluff? Used to take an enterprising man or a plain old fool to venture out that far. The city was the most beautiful place in the world. We all knew that. But on the other hand, some folks just yearn to see the things they're told they can. And that's why you go to Prosper Bluff, ain't it? The kid hears something he ain't heard in a long while. How's it go again?
that's the one. Timeless. Well, no point explaining what happens next, right? Suffice it to say, kid ain't coming home empty-handed. And besides, it's like the song goes. celebrated when the kid got back, didn't we? Zolf never thought he'd see a fellow her again. We become fast friends. Calamity has that effect on people. But there was more to be done. There was one last core to find. Most of the Ura never got a taste of Ceylandia's fine goods, unless they were born and raised in the city like Zia here. Sure, the world's all gone to pieces farther than the eye can see, but leave it to this gal to point out the amazing view. Girl tried to run away from home one time, but the marshals stopped that, didn't they? So many secrets in there and she can't even read it. Her father's own journal.
If only I'd known half the secrets of the calamity were tucked away in that book, I'd have worked to translate it right away. The scientific journal written in Zolf's native tongue. He learned so much from it. Too much. Kid's surprised when I tell him there's only one core left. I shouldn't have believed it either. We tracked the final core beyond the city to the wilds.